Hey guys, we are going to look at zero product property. We're going to answer the question, what is the zero product property and how can I use it to solve equations? So zero pro product property tells us that if we have two things that multiply and it equals zero, then both those things or one of them has to be zero because the only way we can multiply to get zero is if one or the other or both of them are zero. Okay, so if we have a times b equals zero, it means that either a is zero or b is zero, or they could both be zero. So we are going to use this to solve equations. So the zero product property, like we talked about, states that if two things multiply and equal zero, then a and or b must be zero. So this fact can be used to solve equations in factored form with these steps. So the first thing that you're gonna do is set the equation equal to zero. So you might have to rearrange it if it's not already set equal to zero. Then if it is not factored, we need to factor it because the only way we can use the zero product property is if we have two things that are multiplied to equal zero. So factor it and get those factors if you don't already have them. And then you will set each of those factors equal to zero and solve each of those simple equations. So let's look at this first one, and I'm gonna be writing the steps out to the side here. So the first step is set equal to zero. The second step is make sure it's factored. And then the third step is to set each factor equal to zero. So it is already set equal to zero. We are good there. It is also in factored form. I have a binomial times a binomial, so we are good on the factoring. Now I need to set each factor equal to zero. So my first factor is x plus four. So if x plus four times x plus two equals zero, that means that x plus four has to equal zero or x minus two has to equal zero. So that's all I'm doing. I'm gonna set x plus four equal to zero. And then I'm also going to set x minus two equal to zero. And now I'm just going to solve each of these equations. So let's go back to this first one, x plus four equals zero. I would subtract four and I get that x equals negative four. And then x minus two equals zero. I would add two and get that x equals two. So we have x equals negative four and x equals two. So now that we are moving into nonlinear equations, like we have an x times x, so that's an x squared, a lot of the times we end up with two solutions. And there's a lot of ways to write two solutions in math. Um, I'm going to use curly brackets for the solution set. So you do a little squiggly bracket like that. I like to put the lowest number first and then the highest number second. It doesn't really matter the order, I just prefer to do it that way. So that is how you write your two solutions. X could equal negative four or two. Okay, let's look at this second one and let's write out our steps. So the first thing is it has to be set equal to zero, which we are. The second thing is it has to be factored which it is because I have three X times two X minus one. I have two things that multiplied. And then my third step is to set each factor equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. My first factor is three X. So I'm going to set three X equal to zero. And then to get X by itself, I would just divide by three and X equals zero. And then the second step is 2x minus 1 equals 0. So now to solve for x, I would add 1 and get 2x equals 1 and then divide by 2. So x equals 1 half. So now I have my two solutions and I'm going to write them in curly brackets. So x equals 0 or 1 half.
Okay, let's look at number three. Let's go through our steps. So the first step is to make sure the equation is set equal to zero, which it is. Second step is to make sure that it is in factored form, which it is. I have x plus six times three x minus seven. I have two things that multiply. And then my third step is to set each factor equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. X plus six is the first factor, so I'm gonna set that equal to zero. And all I would do to get x by itself is subtract six, so x equals negative six. There's our first solution. Second factor is three x minus seven. So I'm gonna set that equal to zero. And to get x by itself, I would add seven, and I get three x equals seven, and then divide by three, so x equals seven thirds. So now I have my two solutions, and I'm gonna write them with curly brackets. X is negative six or seven thirds. Okay, number four, let's go through our steps for zero product property. The first step is it has to be set equal to zero, which it is. The second step is it has to be factored, which it is not factored yet. I do not have something times something equals zero. I have something plus something equals zero. So let's factor it. So I know that this is not factor by grouping because factor by grouping we only do with four terms but it looks like I can take a GCF here. And my GCF of 4x squared plus 16x would be 4x, and then 4x squared divided by 4x is x, and 16x divided by 4x is four. Okay, so now I have factored it, and I can go to my last step, which is to set each factor equal to zero. Okay, so I'm gonna set four X equal to zero. And when I divide by four, I get that X is zero. And then I'm gonna set the second factor X plus four equal to zero. and I'm going to subtract four, and I get that x equals negative four. So my two solutions here are negative four and zero. Okay, let's look at number five. Let's go through our steps. So our first step is to make sure the equation is set equal to zero, which it is. Second step is to factor, which it is not factored. So I only have two terms. I'm gonna see if there's a GCF between three X squared and 30 X. Three and 30 have a common factor of three and then X squared and X means I can pull out an X. So GCF is three X, three X squared divided by three X is X and 30 X divided by three X is 10. Okay, now it is in factored form, so I'm gonna do my last step, which is to set each factor equal to zero. So three X equals zero will be that first equation. Divide by three, we get that X equals zero. And then X plus 10 equals zero will be the second equation. So I'm going to subtract 10 and I get X equals negative 10. So my two solutions are negative 10 and zero. Okay, number six, let's go through our steps. The first step 
is to make sure the equation is set equal to zero, which it is not set equal to zero here. So I can either subtract 18x squared from both sides or subtract 15x from both sides to get it set equal to zero. I'm gonna subtract the 15x because we want to try and keep the x squared positive when possible. So I subtract zero from both sides and I get 18x squared minus 15x equals zero. So we set it equal to zero. Second step is to factor, which this is not factored. So let's go ahead and factor it using GCF since there's just two terms. So the GCF of 18 and 15 would be three and then they both have an x. So 18x squared divided by 3x is 6x, and then negative 15x divided by 3x is negative 5. Okay, so we set it equal to 0, we factored, and now I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. So 3x, I'm going to set that equal to 0. and I would divide by three and get that x equals zero. And then six x minus five, I will set that equal to zero. So I'm gonna add five to both sides and I get six x equals five and then we'll divide by six. So x equals five sixths. So my solutions are 0 and 5 sixths. All right, number 7. Let's go through our steps. First step is to set the equation equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 28x from both sides to accomplish that and I get 4x squared minus 28x equals zero. And then second step is to factor. So I'm going to factor by GCF. The GCF of 4x squared minus 28x would be 4x, and then I'm left with x minus seven. So I set it equal to zero, I factored, and then the last step is to set each factor equal to zero. So let's start with 4x, I'm gonna set that equal to zero. And I would divide by four and get that x equals zero. And then my second factor, x minus seven, set that equal to zero and I would add seven and get that X equals seven. So my two solutions are zero and seven. Okay, last one, let's go through our steps. I want to make sure the equation is set equal to zero, which it is then I need to factor. So this one, since it has four terms, I'm going to factor by grouping. So let's group. The GCF of that first group would be x. The GCF of this second group would be six. And now I'm going to pull out the GCF. So the GCF is x. Three x squared divided by x is three x and negative two x divided by x is negative two. Okay, GCF of the second group is six, 18x divided by six is three X and negative 12 divided by six is negative two. Okay, now I have my common binomials, so I can factor them out and I'm gonna get X plus six times three X minus two. All right, so it was set equal to zero, I factored it, and now I'm gonna do the last step, which is to set each factor equal to zero. So 
So let's start with x plus 6. I'm going to set that equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 6 and I get x equals negative 6. And then the second factor is 3x minus 2. So I'm going to set that equal to 0. And I get 3x equals 2, and then we'll divide by 3, and we get x equals 2 thirds. So the two solutions to this equation are negative 6 and 2 thirds.